Hi folks, Lori here. It's June 20th, 2015, 10.46 p.m. Central Time. I thought I'd just let you have some background information about what got me into uh, looking at the CERN beam um, and a little bit of what I've been finding. At the end of May, I was listening to Clyde Lewis's show, Ground Zero, when he had Anthony Patch on as a guest. And they were talking about uh, the Hadron Collider and faces seen in the beam. The title of the show was Hadron Stargate Infernal Maelstrom. Uh, by the way, all the links will be below this video of the articles and other videos that I will be referring to. In this um, interview, they were referring to these faces that are being seen in a beam and Clyde Lewis posted a photo of one of the beams that you can see here um, looks like there's a face there kind of hard to see at this distance so he has it blown up and there you can see several he also had it tinted to a red color that might help some of you see a little better during this interview they were talking about uh, not just the faces, but um, parallel universes, quantum theory, strangelets, and other things I hadn't heard of. Some of it I had just in passing. So I thought I would go uh, listen to Anthony Patch a little bit more on some other interviews. And I came upon... Uh, this program here on Canary Cry Radio Channel. Uh, apparently YouTube had removed it and closed someone's account that was carrying it. Um, and it got reposted on this 7th from Adam channel. It's called The CERN Conspiracy with Anthony Patch. And um, it, it had probably a little bit more information in it than the other show. And uh, Anthony Patch says that um, what he's trying just to do is kind of be a mediator between the physicist, scientist, and that lay person so that the average person like me who's not a scientist can have a better grasp to understanding uh, a lot of the scientific terms and uh, terminology and processes that they're using over there at CERN and just trying to bring to our attention things that maybe we should be paying attention to and be concerned about. Anthony Patch, I discovered, has his own website, and it's here at uh, www.anthonypatch.com. I am not affiliated with him. I'm just trying to give you some information and tools of where to find information. Now, I was just on his site the other day, a few days ago, and was looking for some other programs that I might be able to listen to. And what I'm finding odd tonight is uh, all these shows that were on YouTube are telling me the same thing as what happened to that other program. Um, it's no longer available. Now, that sends up even more of a red flag to me that uh, all the CERN information is being systematically removed from people to have access to. And makes me wonder, why would that be happening? Uh, you can't have that many people closing their account. Uh, I know for a fact that one channel, they did not request to have their account closed. They had not done anything wrong, but it no longer available just like all of these. One of the things that they had talked about in the show was this god called Shiva that is at the CERN compound. Here's a picture of it uh, be that's between the buildings. As much as I can I normally try to confirm information from a primary source. Uh, this is the CERN website, the press office, and I looked up information about the Shiva statue, and, and there it is. There's a dedication ceremony that they ha 
having um, this is the CERN compound. Uh, it's a statue of Nataraja, the cosmic dancer, which is also referred to as the destroyer god. If you can see here, there's a little label, dedication label. And I, I looked up what that said because obviously you, you cannot see it at, at that far away of a vantage point. And it came upon this close-up shot of it here. Um, it actually says, Oh, omnipresent, the embodiment of all virtues, the creator of this cosmic universe, the king of dancers who dances the Ananda Chandava in the twilight. I salute thee. What I find interesting is, aside from the fact that they, they have this at the CERN compound, is how, um, since I've been a child, scientists have constantly mocked Christians and others who believe in God, yet they have on prominent display this God of the Hindus in a ceremony for it, and um, I, I just I just find that bizarre. Um, it's kind of like, I guess, you can have some other kind of gods, but not God the Creator be someone that you believe in, even though Sir Isaac Newton believed in God and Christ, and he's the the theorist behind all the calculus. Um, he was a genius, and in today's world, he probably would be thrown out of all the scientific offices. Back on my uh, YouTube channel, I have under my discussions tab and a couple of excerpts from um, Clyde Lewis's interview with Anthony Patch. One of them is here. Um, I entitled it Faces Seen in the Beam and then Strange Lits. And another excerpt is about an unidentified lying object. As far as I know, that was uh, coined by the top physicist at CERN, Albert DeRoke. He's a staff member at CERN and a professor of the University of Antwerp in Belgium and UC Davis. And this is kind of how uh, you get into the quantum thought process here. He's saying um, there's nothing wrong with it, even though it shut down CERN for, I think, a, a few days until they can figure out what was in the tube. Um, as long as they keep an eye on it. Well, Anthony Patch and Clyde Lewis were talking about in the quantum universe, if you keep an eye on something, then you're, I guess, basically bringing it into our dimension. So you don't really want to keep an eye on it because you don't want it to come into our reality. So it's all this kind of weird stuff uh, going on. And with all this parallel universes and extra dimensions, I wanted to see... Um, first of all, back to my primary source, what what is CERN saying about um, dimensions? And sure enough, there's an article here about it. And then in the register, there's another article about it. Sergio Bertolucci, a director for research and scientific computing at CERN, said, quote, out of this door might come something or... We might send something through it. Um, on this other website here, Recode, there's an article about the quantum computer CEO uh, manufacturer, D-Wave. Our next quantum processor will make computer science history. Well, within the article down here, it says, uh, no one can really say for certain where those helpful distant qubits are operating. The leading bet among physicists is the many worlds interpretation, which would suggest quantum computers offload processing to parallel universes. Um, this, this is their explanation possibly for how it is that they're getting back information that they've, after they've put in um, a question and it's done simultaneously so quickly that an answer um, is given to them in say seconds and the the processing of it is done um, in literally in seconds and 
they're basically saying that they don't think that that could be done in, in our universe. And they don't really have an explanation about where this is done except possibly another universe. And it, it is pretty complicated, but it's also kind of uh, alarming. Here is uh, another article written this year. Detection of many black holes at the LHC could indicate parallel universes and extra dimensions. And this is why I'm saying it's alarming. They're playing around with this kind of stuff over at CERN um, with the intent and desire to do something with this parallel universe and extra dimensions. And might that not explain what, why we're seeing what we're seeing in the beam? Um, Who's to, who's to say that that isn't some entity bleeding through these proton beams coming into our universe? But that also brings me to my next concern. Um, is just the besides the other dimension, we have our dimension. And what they're, they've got running here is a superconducting magnet at CERN that is 100,000 times stronger than Earth's magnetic field. Now, I don't think someone needs to be a scientist to have the ability to logically think that putting a machine that has a magnetic field 100,000 times stronger than Earth's own magnetic field is got to cause some kind of internal structural problem within the earth because the earth has a core that is molten metal magma metal is attracted to magnets it, it will cause movement the waves from the magnetic field don't just not penetrate through the core and then there's also the other concern from the outside of the earth's atmosphere what is it possibly drawing into our atmosphere like extra radiation from the sun or debris or other rays in from from outer space this article here uh, from CERN was written beginning of June and they were explaining how this magnetic field that they've got uh, was hasn't been running because of some problem there was a uh, a problem diagnosed due to oil and they've been cleaning that out and said that hopefully here apparently following this current technical stop they'll probably have it start running again so they'll have their magnets back up and running here's a diagram that uh, tattoo uh, what someone that I subscribe to and listen to periodically um, envision what maybe is possible that the sun's rays could be coming into earth because of this extra magnetic field that's going to be interrupting the normal pattern of what the earth's magnetic field looks like which is kind of like this so if you've got the sun over here this is your solar wind this is the magnetic field of protection. You come back over to here, and this is showing you with extra magnetic fields on the sides, not just where it normally is, but two more, two more. Could this not possibly be what it what it could be causing? Is like a penetration in through the magnetic field protecting the Earth? BP Earthwatch has also recently put out a video and on this one he's talking about the plasma tubes that scientists have recently discovered that come up and out over the earth. This all still plays in with CERN because they're they're affecting the plasma also. You can look up plasma yourself um, and Google that but that's all tied in with this as well. Now to bring it back into why I was doing these recordings, after seeing those photos, after reading a little bit more and listening to Anthony Patch, I tried to figure out what 
I could do to learn more. And I went and found uh, these panels over at CERN website. And this is a picture of one of the first recordings I took. There's clearly a face here on the left and on the right. Uh, it's pinned up on my channel. You cannot see too well on this uh, photo, but there is a pic another face here in the dark. Um, the eyes are very prominently outlined along with the nose. Um, in fact, my daughter saw that and called it to my attention. I was so focused on this, I didn't see the ones in the shadows. But uh, this is what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Um, not a scientist. I'm just curious and concerned and uh, getting alarmed more the more I read about what's going on over there. They, they are conducting experiments that have never been conducted before. They are fooling around with things that they cannot not have any guarantee is not going to affect Earth. There's no way of putting a genie back in the bottle once it's come out. They they really can't guarantee anything except that they are um, making these claims that nothing's going to happen and it's not going to affect us, it's not going to affect our earth, it's not going to affect our atmosphere. And I'm, I'm, I'm afraid that I just don't believe that. Um, thank you for watching. Um, just... Keep paying attention. Thanks for your interest. And do what you can do in your area of influence to at least get people to pay attention to what's going on over there in Switzerland. Thanks and have a great evening.